In this video, we'll learn about the concepts of supply and demand and apply them to an application problem. So first we need to think about some terminology. If we're thinking about a good or a service, something that's going to be bought or sold, the quantity supplied of that good is the amount of the product that the company is willing to make available for sale at a given price. And the higher that price is, the higher the quantity is that's supplied. If think about it this way, if the price is higher, the company is more willing to produce more of that good because they will make more money to offset the cost of producing that good. Now on the flip side, the quantity demanded of that good is the amount of a product that consumers are willing to purchase at a given price. So if you think about it this way, the higher the price is, the smaller the quantity demanded will be. The higher the price, the less willing consumers will be to purchase it at that price. So we've got these two ideas that are working against each other. And the equilibrium price of a product is the price at which the quantity supplied equals the quantity demanded. And economics predicts that the markets will naturally gravitate towards this equilibrium. So let's suppose that the quantity supplied and quantity demanded of t-shirts at a concert are given by these two formulas. First, let's graph these functions just to get an idea of what this looks like. So here's my x-axis and my y-axis. In this case, my x-axis is price and my y-axis is quantity. Now we're going to graph the quantity supplied and the quantity demanded on the same graph, so we'll just call that quantity. Okay, so let's start with our supply function. Our supply function is negative 200 plus 50p. So let's start with a negative 200. Remember that that's our y-intercept. So that means that this supply function crosses the y-axis down here at negative 200. So at the point 0, negative 200, that's one point that I know for sure is on the graph of my supply function. I also can tell that because of the 50p term that the slope of my supply graph is positive. In fact, positive 50. But since we don't have a scale on our axes, we're just going to draw a general positively sloped line. If we had a grid or tick marks or a scale here, then we could plot a couple more points and get a more accurate graph of our function but that's a pretty good rough graph of what our supply curve looks like. So that's S, our supply graph. What about our demand graph? Well, we can tell from the 1000 here that our y-intercept for the demand graph is 1000, which is going to be a lot higher up than our 200 was down on the y-axis. So this is the point 0, 1000 on our demand graph. And the minus 25p tells us that the slope of this demand graph is negative 25, so it's a negatively sloped line. But it's not as steep as our supply graph, because our supply graph had a slope of 50, and our slope is only negative 25. So when we graph this, we want to graph this less steep than our supply graph. And when we do that, we get a picture that looks something like this. And there's our demand graph D. And what we can tell is that the equilibrium point, which is where these two lines cross, is going to be right around here. Again, we don't have a scale, so we can't really estimate where that is. But we can see in our picture that that's the idea. So that's our equilibrium. Okay, now we're actually asked to find the equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. So remember that equilibrium price is where the supply and demand are equal. So all we're going to do is set those two expressions equal to each other and solve for p. So we get negative 200 plus 50p equals 1000 minus 25p. So to solve for p, we're going to get the p's together on one side. I'm going to add 25p to both sides. And we're also going to add 200 to both sides. get the constants together. So 25p and minus 25p cancel, negative 200 and positive 200 cancel, and we end up with 75p equals 1200. Finally we divide both sides by 75. On the left hand side the 75 is divided out, and I get p equals 16. And since this is a price, of course, that's going to be $16 would be the equilibrium price for our t-shirts. What about the equilibrium quantity? Well, the S of P curve gives us the quantity supplied, 
and the d of p curve gives us the quantity demanded. But at this equilibrium, those two are the same value, so we can in fact plug this 16 back into either one of those expressions, and we should get the same answer. So the equilibrium quantity is s of 16, what we get from plugging 16 into our s function, but again, it's also d of 16, I'm just using s because it's first, and so we get negative 200 plus 50 times our equilibrium price, which is 16, and that works out to be 600. So what this tells us is that at the equilibrium, the price of the t-shirts will be 600, there will be 600 t-shirts supplied, and 600 t-shirts demanded. Finally, we're asked to determine the prices for which the quantity demanded is higher than the quantity supplied. So if we go back to our graph, remember that when we graph these functions, we got a picture that looked a little something like this. So this function was our demand curve, and this function was our supply curve. And then in the middle, this was our equilibrium point. And in fact, we now know the coordinates of that point. We know the coordinates of that point are 16, 600. So the question is asking us, when is the quantity demanded higher than the quantity supplied? Well, in our picture here, demand is the green line and supply is the blue line. So we're being asked for which values of the price variable is the green line higher than the blue line. What we can tell is that it's for these prices here. That's where the green is higher than the blue. Now it doesn't make sense to have negative price, so that means that what we're looking at is the price is going to be bigger than or equal to zero, but less than 16. We don't want to have less than or equal to 16 because if the price equals 16, then the demand is equal to the supply, it's not higher than the supply. So this is the value that we're talking about. And let's think about what that would mean. So our price of our t-shirt is lower than the equilibrium price. That means that the consumers want more of those t-shirts because they're not as expensive, but the supplier, the company producing the t-shirts, is less willing to produce that many t-shirts because they're not making as much money off of them. So that means that the vendor selling the t-shirt is probably going to run out of t-shirts and will have some unhappy customers who wish they could have bought some t-shirts. So again, we can kind of tell the story of how the demand and the supply work together and talk about this equilibrium idea.